Hi y'all, it's Kim again. Today we're going to be reading Gus and the Baby Ghost by Jan Thayer, pictures by Seymour Fleischman. This one is really special one to me because this one my grandma read to my mom when she was a little girl and then my mom read to me and my brother when we were little. So, Gus the Ghost and Mrs. And Mr. Frizzle ran the historical museum. Gus at night, Mr. Frizzle during the day. Mr. Frizzle lived upstairs. Gus had an attic apartment. Cora the cat lived here and there. Cora the, uh, and Mouse the mouse had his own private quarters. Late one night, when Gus was in charge, Cora came in from a moonlight walk and said, a baby ghost is outside. Sure enough, a baby ghost wrapped in a ghostly blanket lay on the step. What do I do with it? Gus cried. Wah! yelled the baby ghost. Feed, said Cora. Grown-up ghosts never get hungry, but baby ghosts often do. Gus carried the baby ghost in its blanket into the old-fashioned kitchen and found some milk. Warm, advised Cora. Gus warmed the milk. Bottle, said Cora. Gus made some ghostly remarks, and a baby's bottle appeared. Wah, yelled the baby ghost. When the milk was gone, burp, advised Cora. Gus tossed the baby ghost over his shoulder and patted and patted until a bubbling came up. Wah! Change, directed Cora. Gus produced a clean diaper. Coo, said the baby ghost contentedly when the diaper was changed. Sleepy, said Cora. Gus had just laid baby, baby ghost in the antique cradle and covered it with the old paisley shawl when Mr. Frizzle came running downstairs, his, his bathrobe flying. I thought I heard a baby, he cried. Baby ghost corrected Gus. Where? yelled Mr. Frizzle. Cradle, said Gus. The cradle looked empty to Frizzle, but he could see it was rocking gently. What in thunder is it doing here? he sh shouted. Sleeping, said Gus. Mr. Frizzle, who had a terrible temper, began to shout and tell Gus he would would not have a baby ghost in his museum. Gus began to shout back, not knowing what else to do. Cora went went under the Boston rocker, and Mouse scurried into the wall. Baby ghosts waked up with all this noise and yelled, Wah! Cora yelled, Meow! Mouse snarled, Shut up! Go to bed, Frizzle, shouted Gus. Finally, Mr. Frizzle pounded upstairs. He, when he had gone, Gus sat down with a sigh of relief in the Boston rocker, and Cora leaped onto his lap. Gus rocked the cradle until Baby Ghost fell asleep. Gus understood how Mr. Frizzle felt. Frizzle was proud that many people came to see the museum, and he didn't want anything to frighten them. Gus kept out of the way, but a crying baby ghost might not. 
I'll do something tomorrow, thought Gus. He fell asleep rocking the cradle. Baby Ghost slept and Cora slept. Only Mouse whisked about busily, looking for a crumb of something. When daylight came, Gus warmed another bottle for Baby Ghost. Bath, advised Cora. Gus got a baby, a baby's bathtub and filled it with warm, ghostly water. Baby Ghost was so cute, splashing happily and gurgling, that, ba that Gus began to feel happy himself. When he had it all dry and smelling of ghostly talcum powder, he decided he would like to keep this little baby ghost. But I can't keep it in my attic apartment, he told himself. It has to sleep in the cradle. Besides, my ghostly bones are too old to run upstairs with bottles. He carried baby ghost back to the old cradle. Wah! cried baby ghost, who was hungry again. Down came Frizzle, filled with fury. It's still here, he cried. Shh, said Gus. Call the police, shouted Mr. Frizzle. Very funny, said Gus. Wah, yelled Baby Ghost. Mr. Frizzle called the police himself. There's a baby ghost at the historical museum. Come and get it. Beg pardon, said the police. I want to get rid of a baby ghost, shouted Mr. Frizzle. Two policemen came. What seems to be the problem, they said. We've got a baby ghost, said Mr. Frizzle. Are you feeling all right, Mr. Frizzle, asked the police. I feel fine, shouted Frizzle. Show us this baby ghost, said the policeman politely. But Gus had decided that he was going to scare the policeman away. He raced upstairs and brought down his bang-clank equipment, which he kept in case somebody wanted to hear a ghost clanking around. Bang-clank, went Gus on his bang-clank equipment. Wah, yelled Baby Ghost at the noise. The policemen turned pale and bumped into each other, rushing out the door. Just then, an early visitor arrived. Keep that kid quiet, hissed Frizzle. Gus snatched Baby Ghost from the cradle and gave it a bottle. He sang a ghostly lullaby till it went back to sleep. Fizzle felt calmer when the visitors left, without knowing they had a baby ghost. He said in a reasonable voice, Now, Gus, you know you've got to keep get rid of it. If I keep it quiet, Gus thought craftily, Fizzle never will know if it's here. Leave it to me, Fizzle, he said, and Mr. Fizzle went off, reassured. Then Gus got a book on the care and feeding of baby ghosts. He ordered milk from the milkman and put in supplies of baby food, ghostly diapers, and talcum powder to keep baby ghost comfy. He found a ghostly rattle and other toys to keep it amused. He oiled the antique music box so it played t tinky tunes that baby ghost liked to hear. Baby ghost was content and didn't cry. But one day, Mr. Fizzle, who thought the baby ghost was gone, happened to be passing the cradle when he heard a soft coo. He stopped short and stared at the cradle. You didn't get rid of it, he shouted. Wah, yelled Baby Ghost, alarmed at the noise. Meow, yelled Cora, alarmed by Baby Ghost. Listen, Fizzle, yelled Gus. Then he lowered his voice. If you would control your temper, everything would be fine. 
Finally, Mr. Frizzle sat down in the Boston rocker, not knowing what else to do. He lowered his voice, too, and said, Harumph! He stared at the cradle, which still looked empty to him. Do you swear it won't cry in Reuben business? he demanded. If you don't come roaring around, retorted Gus. Harumph! said Mr. Frizzle. Then Gus put up a large sign. Quiet, please. To remind Mr. Fizzle, Mr. Fizzle began to talk to visitors in hushed tones. He stopped shouting at Gus. He didn't even say harumph because he didn't want to make Baby Ghost cry and alarm the people. But Gus saw him glance at the cradle sometimes, and he knew Mr. Frizzle was nervous. One day, Mr. Frizzle was telling a lady visitor in hushed tones so he wouldn't wake Baby Ghost. This is an antique cradle. Suddenly, Mr. Frizzle, the visitor, and Gus, who is nearby, were startled to hear quite plainly, Coo! Have you got a baby ghost? the lady cried. Certainly not, cried Mr. Frizzle. Oh, I wish you had a baby ghost said the lady sadly. Fizzle looked at the lady in surprise. He eyed her suspiciously. Was she joking? He liked to please the visitors to his museum. So finally, Fizzle said cautiously, we might have a small baby ghost. The lady rushed off to tell her friends that this wonderful, delightful historical museum had something very special, a real baby ghost. Soon, crowds of people came, tiptoed in, and stood around, waiting to hear the baby ghost in the antique cradle under the old paisley shawl, shawl say coo. Your baby ghost sounds so happy, everyone whispered. Mr. Frizzle proudly whispered back, our baby ghost has a happy home, that's why. Before long, Baby Ghost was a permanent member of the household. Sometimes, when the museum closed after a busy day, Mr. Frizzle sat down in the Boston rocker. In a rare good humor, Cora leaped into his lap. Mouse kept as quiet as a mouse. Mr. Frizzle rocked the cradle. While Gus hung Baby Ghost's ghostly washing, in the evening air. The end. I hope you all enjoyed this book as much as I did when my mom read it to me and my mom did when her mom read it to her. Have a great day.